Lesson seven, practice problems. Number one, a bakery used 25% more butter this month than last month. If the bakery used 240 kilograms of butter last month, how much did it use this month? All right, so what we can do for this one, you know, we can kind of follow what we did during our lesson, which is we could do a double number line. Double number lines are great, but they're a little bit of a pain to set up sometimes, not the easiest things to, to do. It's, you know, but they're easy when the percents are kind of like easier percents, like 25% is the, not a tough one to, to do. So, all right, so let's, let's do this. I'm gonna set it up. All right, I'm gonna make this part right here. 200, put it, 240, I don't want to put there though, put it here, all right, 240 kilograms, all right, and since, um, you know, this problem right here is, is referring to it as, as 25%, so I'm going to break this up into four parts, all right, so if I, and I'm eyeballing this, I think that, that doesn't look that great, but maybe like right here. That's about halfway, so that is half of 240. So that's 120 kilograms. And then let's cut the halves in half. And so half of 120 is 60. So I'll go 60 more than 120 for that one. That's going to be 180 kilograms. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. For this, now the double number line, now this is going to represent the percents. So I want to put 100% here. You want 100% there. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to kind of get everything to line up. And I'm just, this is a little sloppy, but it will do. So you got 25%, 50%. And, you know, and we can kind of keep keep going here. That I can make this 125 percent. You know, because this is this is, is asking about uh, increase, 25 percent more butter. So uh, now it's really easy now that we have to set up. I know it's not the easiest thing in the world to set up double double number lines, but now it's pretty simple. Like it's right there. You can see everything. You can see that you know every every 25% it's increasing 60 kilograms, right? Every every time it goes up 25% it goes up 60 kilograms. So it's really easy to see the increase, you know, because that's what we're interested in. We're interested in how many kilograms is it this month. And so uh, now it's just a matter of adding 60 onto 240. So just do 240 plus 60 and that is going to be 300 kilograms, okay? That's quite a bit. All right, number two. Number two, I'm not gonna use a, a double number line for this one. Let's go ahead and just do this just using uh, percents and decimals. So for number two, last week, the price of oranges at the farmer's market was $1.75 per pound. This week, the price has decreased by 20%. What is the price of oranges this week? All right. So we could just figure out, you know, um, what 20% is. That 20% uh, is equal, as a decimal, it's equal to 2 tenths, right? You can put a zero there if you want, but 2 tenths, that's what it is. So if we just do $1.75, times two tenths, what we're going to get is we're going to get um, the decrease. Now that's not going to be the price, it's just going to be how much the price decreased. Okay? So that's what we're going to do first. Let's do that. So let's do $1.75 times two. So remember you don't need to line up decimals when you multiply them. So that's going to be 10 carry the 1, uh, 14 plus 1 is 15, carry the 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, so $350, no that's not it, 
that's going to be we're going to be need to move the decimal over you know remember your decimal stuff one two three places so let's go so we're going to move it over three places there so move it over three places see so it's one two three so there it is so this has to move over three places one two three and there it is so that's what it is so now we don't really need this zero anymore we can kind of cut that off but right there we've got the price decrease that's not the price remember that's how much it went down so it went down 35 cents so now just do $1.75 minus 35 cents and you're gonna get a dollar forty. One dollar and forty cents is the new price for the oranges. That's per pound. Number two, Noah thinks the answers answers to these two questions will be the same. Do you agree with him? Explain your reasoning. This year, um, well, the first one says this year, a herd of bison had a 10% increase in population. If there were 550 bison in the herd last year, how many are in the herd this year? Okay. Um, okay. Let's, let's, it is what it is. Let's look at the next one here. Pardon me. This year, another herd of bison had a 10% decrease in population. Uh, if there are 550 bison in the herd this year, how many, her how many bison were there last year? All right. So I, what I think Noah is saying basically is that the, the amount that it's increasing or the amount that it decreases is going to be the same. You know, so um, let's let's see here. So this year, a herd of bison had a 10% increase in population. If there is 150 or 550 bison in the herd last year, how many are in the herd this year? All right. So you just have to do for that one. You're just going to do 10% of 550, which is basically going to be. 0.1 times 550. You do the math there and you get 55. So that's going to be 55 bison. Okay? Um, so this year, now if we just add that, because that's, that's, that's an increase, right? So we're going to do 550 plus 55 bison, and that is going to be 605. That's the, and that's this year. All right, so you got 605 there. All right, now the second statement is tricky. It's really, really, really tricky. So this year, another herd of bison had a 10% increase of population. And if there's 550 bison in the herd this year, how many bison were there last year? How many bison? So there's a 10% decrease. And now, um, so this year, another herd of bison had a 10% decrease in population. Uh, if there are 550 bison in the herd this year, how many, how many bison were in the herd last year? So um, it, it's, it's basically saying, like, you know, is it 605? You know, that's, that's the question. Is it 605? So if we do, let's, let's kind of just do it this way. While I'm thinking of it, let's say we did um, that's 10 percent of 605. Okay, let's do that. 10 percent of 605 to figure out what the decrease is. All right, now that's going to be 0 0.10 times 
times 605 and that is going to come out to uh oh 60.5 bison so we're gonna have to chop a bison in half no we're not that's just kind of how that kind of turns out but 60.5 bison all right so it's gonna be 60 and a half fewer all right now if i apply that to 605 605 you know and then subtract 60 and a half like that um, you can already tell that's not going to be the same answer. That's not going to be the same answer. It's, we're not going to get 550, right? We're not going to get it. We can get something pretty close to it, but not exactly. So if we just um, do the math here, borrow, that becomes 10, and we're left with 5 here, and that's 4. And then uh, 60 minus 6 is, uh, is going to be 54. Bring down the decimal point. So 544 and a half bison. That poor bison that's cut in half. And it's, it's a pretty grim picture right there. No, we're not going to have to do that. But yeah, that's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Because we're taking a different percent of a number. So it's a little different. All right. Number four. Number four. All right. Uh, Lena walked 12 miles. Then she walked 25% that distance. How far did she walk altogether? Select all that apply. So she walked 12 miles, and then right here, this first one, kind of make this a little bit easier to see. Not that you need parentheses there, but it doesn't hurt. But that's basically, right here, that's 25% of 12 and you're increasing that so that has got to be an option right there because that shows an increase of 25 percent all right it doesn't say 25 percent but 0.25 means 25 percent and um, in the next one there right if we distribute that you know if we if we distribute what we got there uh, we're going to do 12 times 1 which is you know, 12 plus 12 times 25 percent. Now 12 times 1 is 12. Look at that right there. And then 12 times 25 percent. I can't write today. It's going to be. It's going to look like that. Right. So B is a viable option. Right there. All right, and then uh, C, um, now C is 12 times 1.25. Now it's, it's important for us to look at 1.25. Now 1.25 is essentially uh, 1, right, plus 2,500, plus 25%, right, which is what we've been doing for the previous two problems. So C is going to work as well. All right, uh, D is going to result in um, fewer miles. That's going to represent fewer miles, so it cannot be D. All right, and E, uh, that's the wrong arithmetic there altogether. Number five, the circle circumference is 600 meters. So what is a good approximation for the circle's area? So we're we're approximating, I guess. I'm not sure how it wants us to approximate, but let's let's do. I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking that just for estimation purposes, just for estimation purposes, we're gonna think of pi as just three. You know, it's not that far off. But if we want to just get a ballpark estimate, I think three would be a good number to use. All right, because remember, um, circumference equals pi times diameter, right? So pi times diameter. So um, 600 equals right, 3 times d. So 3 times what is 600? 3 times what? Right, 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 200 is going to be it. So there you go. So the diameter equals 
and I shouldn't say equals, I should say it's approximately, right? I should say it's about 200 meters, because we're just estimating here. All right, and so if the diameter is 200, that means the radius is about 100, because it's half of that, right? And then area, area of a circle, is pi times radius squared. Pi times radius squared. And again, we're using 3 for pi here. So we're going to do 3 times 100 squared. 3 times 100 squared. Now, 100 squared is 100 times 100. And I think that's a billion. No, it's not. It's 100 times 100. You know, if you wanna, it's going to have four zeros. Now, what has four zeros? 100,000? No, that's got five zeros. It is going to be 10,000. So you're going to do 3 times 10,000. My light just turned off. Got to move around more. And that is going to be 30,000 square meters. And that's one of the choices right there. Yay, we got it. All right. Number six. The equation d equals 3t represents the relationship between the distance d in inches that a snail is from a certain rock and the time t in minutes. What does the number 3 represent? I don't know. Beats me. I have no clue. No. So we've got uh, this y equals kx equation. So 3 is, the, um, three is definitely the constant proportionality. Right? That's easy to say. Constant proportionality. What does that mean, though? What does that mean? Well, uh, we're looking at the relationship between distance, inches, and uh, time, minutes. Okay? So what the 3 represents here is, yes, it's a, it's a constant of proportionality, but it also represents the snail uh, is, I don't know, crawling. Do they crawl? They just slide around, slither. The snail moves um, three inches each minute. So it's a lightning fast speed there for a snail. I don't think snails move that fast, actually. I think that's a little fast, but I could be wrong. You can look it up on your own. Because um, I know snails are very, very slow. But how many minutes does it take the snail to get nine inches from the rock? Nine inches from the rock. All right, well, so if it's, if it's moving three inches every minute, three inches every minute, uh, it's going to take, what? Uh, three goes into nine three times. So that's going to take three minutes. Because three times three is nine, right? So it's going to be three minutes to get there. How far will the snail be from the rock after nine minutes? After nine minutes. Okay, so we can just do this one. I, I didn't do this in the last one, but how about we just do an equation here? We've got. 3 times t equals distance, right? We've got that. And so the 9, the 9 represents minutes, so I'm going to replace the t with 9. And then 3 times 9, get your calculators out for that one. I think 3 times 9 is a trillion or something. No, it's 39. 39, right? No, it's not. It is 27. It's 27 inches. All right? That's going to equal the distance that snail will be from that rock. Which again, I think that's too high. All right, that's it. See you later.